Well, traders, I'm about to take off for the weekend, so let me go quickly through my trades today. Uh, here's how it looks like. Um, I had a beautiful trade in DFS, EPZM, second winner, Intel, third winner, MU is coming from yesterday. Trade that I left open and SYF $1,300. I just made over $6,000, which makes it a perfect week. Absolutely great. And um, I do have some open positions. Uh, this is coming from yesterday, BPMC. Uh, a big mistake, left it open. I do have a stop under the lows and it's very, very close now. And um, some open I mean, 100 shares in Intel and SYF. So I'm doing good, around 6K today. And let me quickly go through some of these trades. So Intel was long. What you need to know about Intel, the reason that it was posted is very simple, very clear. First, look at the huge gap. Intel started with a big gap today. Now, Intel is up today 7.5%. Now, Intel is a huge company. It's um, a company that many people are watching. It's a company that many people are following, looking for a chance to go long. And what's better than Intel up 7%? So Intel started with a big gap up today, immediately started moving higher. You never buy on the first move up. That should be a gap and go. And it was a gap and go. It still is a gap and go. But you always look for a pullback. Now, it's hard to see. These are one-minute candles. But look at the second candle. You can see that it came down under the highs. So the highs was right over here. Uh, 66.95 or so, maybe a bit higher, closer to 67, which is great. It's a whole number. And then it came down all the way to here, like uh, 20 cents, not much more than that. But that was enough. And once it decided to move over the highs, that's a confirmation it wants to continue. The reason it's a trigger over 64, 67, sorry, is because it's a whole number. And the rest is just history. Look at how beautiful that was. So I did not get a huge winner. I did not expect it to move up almost two points, really. Intel doesn't usually do that. So I was, and I was risking like 30 cents. So that was my partial, but it kept going and I'm still enjoying the last 100 shares. So that was a beautiful first trade, although relatively small winner. Now let's take a look at uh, some of my shorts. We had... Uh, DFS for sure that was posted under 78.20. Now it's the same idea. You look for a gap and go in a stock that is moving much. Now it's down now almost 10%. Right here now it's down 10%. Look at where it started over here. Huge gap down, fails to move higher as you expect from a stock that's starting with a gap down a big gap down, usually more than 3%. You expect it to fail. You look for the first pullback. Again, first move up, which is great. Just a very technical, very technical. That's exactly what I'm looking. That's my bread and butter trades. So it moved up, was looking for a reversal, posted it until 78.20, which was right over here. And it looked solid enough at that point to continue coming down, which it did. So that was a beautiful, beautiful move over two points as it came down and uh, one of my best uh, winners today. Uh, another winner, which looks quite similar, is um, SYF. Let's take a look at SYF. So here's SYF, and this one was posted under 33.80. Now again, take a look at uh, the same kind of, the same scenario. It's down now 9%. Maybe it was down like 6%. But again, you expect a gap and go because it's gapping down dramatically. And it started here, came down, then moved higher, which was enough for me. You, you look at the buyers, you expect them to fail, and then once it starts coming down, you look for the reversal and you short it. Of course, the right entry point is always very, very important. This one was posted in the room under 33.80, which was right over here. That was above the lows. You see, the lows was here at 70 or so. So I posted it approximately 10 cents above the low because first, it was enough. It was a clear reversal. Second, at that point, I was expecting it to break down under the lows because it came down with nice momentum. And again, you need to see the volume, you need to see the technical formation. And sure enough, it came under the lows nicely, pulled back a bit, and look at this huge, huge move all the way down to 32 something. So this one moved uh, more than a point, a beautiful trade in SYF. And uh, the last one was EPZM. 
let's take a look at EPCM. I was looking to short it today under 24. You may remember I posted it in the room as it came down, consolidated near the lows. That could have been a nice breakdown formation here, nice uh, kind of a bear flag, if you like, but that didn't happen. I was looking for a breakdown under 24, whole number. It was supported at the 24 very, very clearly, but then it decided to move higher, which was kind of strange because the stock is down right now 11%. I think I was looking at here and I said, well, it's down like 6 or 7%. It shouldn't continue. I was looking for the first sign of a pullback. Now look at how beautiful it continued to move. It moved higher. First sign of a pullback was clearly this candle. I posted it here. Uh, under 24.85, actually initially under 24.80, then I, I, I mentioned in the trading room should be 24.85, which was right over here. Now, why did I do that? Did I know it's going to stop moving higher? No, I did not know that. But what was nice about this trade, I had a good risk reward ratio. So stop over the highs or even before that could have been here. And likely to come down because it was down six or seven percent and it did come down although this pullback here was a bit too much and it took me out the rest of my quantity but look at uh, what's coming uh, next so it was a relatively small winner for me i'm going to finish my day up over six grand and that was beautiful and it's just an amazing trading session today and it comes up comes after several good trading sessions this week so i really had fun I hope you guys had fun too. And I won't be trading next week, as I told you a few days ago, those of you who missed, because I'm flying for a wedding. AJ, Ajinkia, is having a wedding next week in India. And um, I'm going to visit him there. I was invited and I'm very, very happy to uh, come over. And therefore, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll be trading. I mean, depending on my... Uh, internet quality in the hotel rooms and uh, things like that but um, it's certainly going to be fun visiting India for the second time in a year and a half or so um, a great excuse for me to to fly over to India which I loved for the first time I came in and um, got the invitation for a jink for Majinka. it took me uh, just a few minutes to say yes I'm going <laughs> it's gonna be fun I'm gonna see him next week and um, thank you all for joining and uh, participating with us, you guys on YouTube, if you don't mind giving us a thumb up, that would be beautiful. It will help our community. And um, everybody else, don't forget uh, the World Series of Day Training coming up soon. And uh, I'll keep in touch uh, with picture, Instagram, Facebook, and hopefully some trading days. So see you next time. I don't know exactly when. Bye, traders. Have a beautiful and amazing weekend too. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14-day trial. TradeNet has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004, and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.